in the early days, many farms had woods where hogs fed on acorns. The time and effort required to bring them to the home pens were greatly curtailed by calling them in. Today, hauling is less popular, but when it is resorted to, the animals still respond instinctively. Hog raising fits well into the wide range of conditions common to Western farms. The successful raising of healthy, profit-producing pigs is being accomplished by good management and sanitation. Unclean pens and bacteria infested soil cause diseased herds and a loss of profit. Therefore, clean, wholesome feed and water, good pasturage, and airy sanitary pens are first essentials to success. The hog lot should have sufficient slope to assure ample drainage and be large enough to permit animals to have plenty of exercise. Selection of breeds is a matter of personal preference. There are several from which to choose, any of which will prove satisfactory with proper care and management. This Duroc has the desirable points of confirmation to ensure profit-producing progeny. The Poland China is another breed popular in the West. Selection of a breed common to a certain community provides a known breed name and also available breeding stock. The Berkshire is readily distinguished by the jet black color and a short dished face. And here we have the Chester White. The Spotted Poland China is a popular breed. The Hampshire is distinguished by the white belt. Boars should be kept in individual pasture plots with clean, dry living quarters. This provides them with good forage and proper space for exercise. Well-constructed fences facilitate handling of stock, protect boars from damage caused by fighting, and permit individual feeding. This Montana number one boar is the result of inbreeding from a crossbred foundation. Winter quarters free of drafts and supplied with dry straw provide protection. Runways should be open to sunshine and large enough for exercise. During the gestation period, ample exercise, feed and water are necessary to keep sows in good condition. Good pasture contributes to healthy birth and development of little pigs. Swine raising equipment need not be expensive. Hog housing systems are of two general types the centralized house and the colony or portable house. The portable house is light enough to be moved to clean dry ground periodically. The A-type house is moved with the aid of a skid. Others may be built on permanent skids to facilitate moving. The A-type house is of simple construction and inexpensive. It is excellent on farms where the business is continually expanding or is expected to do so. Houses to be used for farrowing in cold weather should be equipped with a heater and a guardrail. A house eight feet square is advisable. This Hubbard-type brooder with electric heat lamp reduces losses from chilling. And as young pigs seek warmth from the lamp instead of the sow's body, losses from crushing are also reduced. A guardrail around the house, six inches from the wall and 10 inches from the floor level, keeps the sow from lying on the pigs. Most losses of newly farrowed pigs are due to crushing by the sow. This animated drawing shows how a farrowing house without a guardrail permits the sow to lie on her offspring causing injury or death. Installation of a guardrail around the room keeps the sow from lying against the wall and reduces crushing to a minimum. Lye dissolved in scalding hot water is good for scrubbing out farrowing houses. The solution is mixed in a wooden container as lye corrodes and destroys metal. An old broom can be used to wash the walls and floor of the farrowing pen from which dried manure has previously been scraped with a hoe or shovel. The hot lye water effectively destroys the eggs of round worms or other organisms. Caution is necessary to prevent lye water from coming in contact with face, skin or clothing. Proper sanitation aimed at disease prevention cannot be repeated too often, as many contagious hog diseases can put hog producers out of business. Disease is less expensive to prevent than to cure.
clean, dry straw placed on the floor will provide a degree of warmth and comfort for the sow and her new offspring. Bedding requires changing frequently enough to keep it dry and clean. Before moving the pregnant sow into the farrowing house, treatment for intestinal worms is recommended. Care is required to prevent her becoming nervous or irritated. The centralized farrowing house is more convenient and less laborious to operate than the colony type. Again, vigilant care must be taken to keep the premises clean. Inside the centralized house is a washroom, farrowing stalls, holding pens, room to store feed, an alley through the center, and a concrete floor throughout. It is important to thoroughly brush and wash the sow with soapy water to remove worm eggs before placing in the stall. And a mild disinfectant is applied as a precaution against disease and parasites. Western swine men are using farrowing stalls and as a result are saving many little pigs which might otherwise be crushed. The stall is made six to eight feet long and two feet wide with a space of 16 inches on each side for little pigs. A space of 10 to 12 inches beneath the stall's partitions permits young ones free access to and from the sow. A hanging heat lamp will protect against chilling. The farrowing stall can be adjusted to fit any sized sow by placing a removable two by four across one end of it. The farrowing stall saves time, labor, and stock, and is cheap to build, usually of materials at hand. Feeding newborn pigs synthetic sow's milk is a practice worth thinking about. The powdered pig milk replacer is mixed with warm water and made available for the pigs to drink at will with the same frequency with which they nurse the sow. Feeding synthetic milk makes it possible to raise pigs from sows that die or do not produce milk. Pigs can be weaned at an early age, making it possible to raise three litters from a sow in one year. When feeding synthetic milk, it must be done under strictly sanitary conditions if it is to prove profitable and save little pigs. The most profitable pig is one that never stops growing from time of farrowing until it goes to market. As soon as possible after farrowing, the pigs should be started on feed to meant their mother's milk. The sow should have fresh, clean water, but no feed during the 12 to 24 hours after farrowing. And who cares? Soon after farrowing, the young pigs should have their tusks or needle teeth cut midway between the point of the tooth and the jaw to prevent injury to the sow's udder. There are two of these teeth in each corner of the mouth, making eight in all. After clipping, an antiseptic is applied to prevent infection. A pair of side cutting pliers is used for clipping the teeth. This is also a good time to mark the pigs for easy and accurate identification. The ears are notched with a special tool. The tool is dipped in disinfectant after notching each pig to prevent spread of disease or infection. If the pigs are from purebred parentage and the grower wishes to have them registered, another method of identification is established by perforating the ear with a tattooing punch after which indelible ink is rubbed into the perforations. The tattoo markings can be easily and quickly read at any time during the life of the pig. Here, newborn pigs are conveniently moved by being carried into the farm trailer in a fruit basket. Placed in the space behind a removable partition in the trailer's front end, they can be safely hauled without being jostled about as they would be in the larger section of the trailer's body. In loading the sow, the same basket is used as a blind. Trying to back away from the basket, the sow is soon loaded. And with the tailgate in place, 
both she and her brood can travel in safety. And away they go to their new quarters or clean pasture. Hogs being subject to numerous ailments, blood samples are taken and tested to determine if the hog is free from brucellosis infection. Hog producers should avail themselves of the services of a veterinarian. Hog cholera kills more pigs than any other disease, and hog lot sanitation is of no avail in controlling it. Vaccination being the only preventative, it is practiced widely. Each pig is marked to make sure none is missed. For the first three weeks, young pigs depend primarily on their mother's milk. The sow requires adequate feed to produce sufficient milk for the litter. Overfeeding during the first week stimulates the milk flow, resulting in indigestion in the pigs, followed by scours. During the nursing period, the sow and young pigs should have a clean, dry place to rest and sleep, and ample space for exercise. Creep feeding, shown here, permits young pigs to feed from a self-feeding rack undisturbed by the sow. Good pasture is conducive to producing cheap gains. With a grain ration, plenty of water and forage, growing pigs are kept in good condition and make rapid gains. To raise profitable litters, sows must have good housing. The hog house must be warm, well ventilated and light. It may be either portable or stationary. The most widely used is the portable type, either individual A or half monitor. Any inexpensive house that can be ventilated and moved from place to place for proper sanitation is desirable. One that can be opened in summer and partially or completely closed in winter is preferable. Good sanitation is always important. Shade trees in the lot or pasture are an asset, as air moves more freely than under artificial structures and keeps the hogs cooler. Rations vary according to location. Usually homegrown feeds, such as barley, wheat, oats, corn, skim milk, alfalfa pasture, or good alfalfa hay make up the ration. The grower then need only buy the necessary supplements, which may include protein, vitamins, and minerals. They need not experiment on feeding as our colleges and experiment stations are continually conducting feeding tests. Throughout the feeding period, it is usually more economical to use self-feeders. This is particularly true when the labor factor is taken into consideration. The feeders here are being filled from a tractor-drawn feed hopper. The power takeoff from the tractor is doing the work. Here the grower is serving grain concentrates according to each animal's need. This is important before farrowing and when gradually increasing the sow's ration following the farrowing period. Trailers are usually loaded from a trap door in the bottom of this hillside crib. Notice that loop of rope at the back of the trailer. Its other end is fastened to a movable front end gate. To unload the trailer, the loop is thrown over a post and as the trailer moves forward, its load is dragged off by the front end gate. In other words, the trailer moves out from under its load, which is a quick way of serving ear corn to the pigs. During the hot summer months, pigs should have access to water in which to keep cool as they do not perspire. Where a running stream is not available, temporary man-made pools may be used. These require draining and drying by the sun at intervals, frequent enough to keep them in a sanitary condition. Well-made concrete wallows, conveniently located, add much to the contentment and well-being of pigs. And, of course, there's such a thing as hogging the bathtub. A well-made wallow should have about six inches of water in it, which must be kept clean, as hogs invariably drink some of it. This little shoat loves to sit and soak. Since water makes up more than half the weight of the body, it is important that plenty of fresh, clean water be available at all times. 
hogs often suffer from lack of water when it's poured in a trough only once or twice a day. If running water is not available, an automatic watering device is desirable. During the winter, hogs will drink more water if it is not allowed to freeze. Installation of a small heating unit will keep water at an even temperature. Labor-saving devices and streamlined methods that minimize work and increase efficiency of management are absolutely necessary for economical pork production. The self-feeder has become widely used in recent years. An agitator is necessary where ground feed is used. If more than one feed is used in the ration, the feeder may be divided into two or three separate compartments. The areas around the feeders can be kept clean and dry if the feeders are placed on platforms that can be moved frequently. This homemade watering device affords protection from dirt and supplies fresh water with a flip of the lip. A well-made concrete water trough provides individual drinking holes. When pigs are hand-watered, care should be taken to keep them supplied with clean, fresh water at all times. No farm animal appreciates a clean, dry yard more than the pig. Hogs live and lie in filth only when forced to do so. If shade trees are not available for the pig lot, open-type sheds can be cheaply constructed by most anyone handy with a hammer and saw. They can be any size desired and in any number in keeping with the size of the herd. They need only a roof to shield the pigs from direct rays of the sun. In this particular case, available straw is used for the same purpose. Crude oil or ordinary crankcase oil is often added to the hog wallow. It forms a thin layer on the surface so that when the animals wallow in the water, the oil adhering to their bodies kills lice and helps control mange. Commercial sheep dip is also used for the same purpose. Hard surfaced hog lots can be cleaned with a hose. In fact, cleanliness as a prevention against swine diseases cannot be overemphasized. Equipment should be cleaned at regular intervals. This man is using steam, which cleans and sterilizes at the same time. The results of such practices will be reflected in increased profits. High pressure spraying is frequently practiced to control external parasites on large herds. In this way, every pig is covered with an effective insecticide for protection against lice and mange. A repeated spraying within 10 days is necessary to ensure positive results. Spraying fences and hog lot equipment at the same time is a further protection against these profit-reducing pests. This lot is a good example of cleanliness. Internal parasites and common swine diseases can be controlled by following a strict sanitation program to prevent the introduction and spread of these parasites among the herd. Animals requiring individual attention can be easily managed by using a double hinged panel, as shown here. This man has contrived an efficient cutting gate, which he uses frequently in his operation. The battery-equipped electric prod pole is a handy and useful instrument for controlling animals. A well-constructed loading chute is a must in handling hogs for shipment or when receiving hogs at the home ranch. It may be used to advantage when examining hogs at close range or determining their condition or extent of possible injury to the legs or under part of the body. The nose loop is in general use. A wire cable pipe permits the user to keep a safe distance and maintain control. Here it is used to aid in trimming a boar's tusks. While pigs are natural rooters, they have a tendency to overdo it. A ring in the nose tends to curtail this activity. Modern methods of hog raising have removed the pig from the small filthy pen to the sanitary hog lot and the fresh green pasture. The high value of alfalfa as a pasture crop for swine becomes apparent 
in the reduction of concentrated feed required to produce a given gain. Pasturage supplies nutrients such as protein, vitamins, and minerals so essential to the diet. The practice of hogging down corn or gleaning a field after harvest is a labor-saving practice in common use. Yes, the life of the pig has improved. His balanced ration of protein, carbohydrates, and minerals with plenty of clean, fresh water has put profitable flesh on his frame, at the same time reducing his board bill. Provision of pasture for essential exercise, protection from sun and rain, and plenty of rest and sleep will pay the producer who thus coddles the pig. The grower's intelligent effort, work, time, and expense are now due for transformation into hard-earned ready cash. The grower of pigs in small numbers loads his prizes aboard a truck and hauls them off to holding pens at the railhead where they are pooled with the pigs of other producers and held for shipment in carload lots. Sanding of cars is another shipping essential. A layer of sand is placed on the car's upper and lower decks. It gives the animals proper footing and a degree of comfort on their journey. As a finishing touch to sanding, the cars must be wet down in order to lay the dust and keep the animals cool in warm weather. Sacks of corn are then distributed to sustain the pigs en route. The animals having been classified are held at the local yards awaiting shipment. Here they are exercised, fed, watered, and rested during intervals between trains or while waiting for trains to be made up prior to shipment to terminal markets east and west. And here they come, prospective porker passengers apparently as anxious to board their trains as big city suburbanites or subway commuters scurrying to get a seat. Yard attendants release them in small numbers in order to space them out and prevent crowding as they trot through the runways, up the loading ramp, and into the waiting cars. And here they go, a trainload of pigs on their way to market. Quality pork aboard Union Pacific's Daylight Special, en route in this case to Los Angeles. Hogs are one of the West's principal sources of agricultural income. Their popularity is due largely to the fact that they quickly and efficiently turn the food they eat into profit-producing meat. Pigs are generally adaptable and fit well into the wide range of conditions common to Western farms. The hog produces great quantities of fresh meat which lends itself to the curing process and which in turn aids its orderly distribution throughout the world the year round.